A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I'm about to create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. Be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be <clears throat> in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For, who, for one who dies at 100 years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of 100 will be considered accursed. They shall, they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. Like the days of the tree of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. For they call, I will answer. While they are speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
reading from 1 Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but in each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then his coming who belongs to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and every power. For he must reign until he has put all of his un enemies under foot. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week at early dawn, 
Jesus from Galilee came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the tomb, but when they came in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of Jesus, and the other women who, with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. seated. In our gospel reading from Luke, it says, On the first day of the week at early dawn, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee came to the tomb, taking spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. It is with this statement that we have come out on the other side of Holy Week. The women have come to anoint Jesus' body in the tomb. They have come at early dawn. Early dawn. For those of us who are early risers, early dawn is a special time. It is a very quiet time. It is a still time. It is a time when the moon has set, but the sun has not yet come up. It is a time of darkness and quiet. Even if the night was pleasant and warm, one thing we know about early dawn in the 45 minutes to an hour before the sun comes up is that the temperatures drop and even if it had been a warm evening, there is a chill in the air. We also know that often the mist hugs the ground at early dawn. In the quiet and stillness and the dark and the mist and the cold of early dawn, all things are possible. The women have come to anoint Jesus' body again. And you might ask, well, how, what do you mean again? Why is it again that they have come? Recall that six days earlier, Jesus went to Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' house for dinner. And at that dinner, Mary brought out an alabaster jar of costly nard 
It is an essential oil that in those times was used to anoint bodies for burial. In fact, this was just shortly after Lazarus had himself had been raised from the dead. Jesus stood at the tomb and said, roll away the stone. Oh Lord, don't do that, or there will be a stench. Jesus says, roll away the stone, and he knows what comes next. Even as he weeps at the death of his good friend Lazarus, And he calls, Lazarus, come out. And he appeared at the entrance to the tomb, his burial cloths draping off of him. That nard, I think, was purchased by Mary at great cost to anoint her brother's body. And yet, here we are, her brother is alive and well and resurrected. And yet Jesus is alive, and we know what's coming in six days. The unjust trial, the brutality of the execution, and his death. Mary opens the alabaster jar and anoints Jesus' feet and wipes them lovingly with her hair. And we know what is coming next. Jesus knows what is coming next. And what has happened is is that a living human being has already been anointed for death and burial. Mary's anointing of Jesus' feet a week earlier was preparation for his death six days hence. It was at that moment, I believe, that we entered together with Jesus into Holy Week into Jerusalem and into that very last week of Jesus' life and his death. Several weeks ago, I spoke in my sermon about these liminal spaces. The word liminal comes from the Latin word lemon, which is the threshold to a door, literally. And a liminal space is when we are at a threshold between here and there, but we aren't either where we were or where we are going. We entered that liminal space with Jesus at the beginning of Holy Week, and we have walked each step of the way with Jesus through all of Holy Week, and it has culminated in the empty tomb and the resurrection. But just like with Jesus, when we enter into one of those liminal places, we don't really know how things are going to come out. On that last week of Jesus' life, before the Gospels were written, before the resurrection happened, before the tomb was found to be empty, before all of those things happened, We didn't know how things were going to come out. Each of us have the same thing in our lives. We have those liminal spaces like graduation, perhaps from high school or college or a program. And then we wonder, well, now what? What's next? We have those liminal spaces after the divorce papers are filed, but the thing is not finalized, and we don't know what is going to happen next? Or what about when we move to a new town and the moving van has pulled away with all of our boxes and stuff? Now what? Job changes are the same thing. What about the death of a loved one? How do we pick up the pieces of our lives and move on from here? And even at the joy of the birth of a child and all the joy that is inherent there, as a parent of three, and I'm sure many of you are parents, we really don't know what's going to happen next, do we? And it's a lifetime of liminal space with our beloved children. The only thing that we can be certain of during these liminal times, just like with Holy Week, is the fact that we can't stop. We have to keep moving through the liminal spaces 
to get out on the other end. There is no shortcut. There is no way to make it easier or better or to avoid it. We just have to keep moving forward. And this is exactly what these women were doing on this holy morning in the early dawn hours when the mist hugged the ground and the chill was in the air and the moon had gone down and the sun had not come up yet. This is what these women were doing. They were moving through the liminal space of their beloved Savior's death and trying to get out on the other side. So they came to anoint his body again. But you know, this was a different morning because something new was in the air on this holy morning. The air was pregnant with possibilities. The women looked into the tomb and found that their beloved Savior's body was gone. It was not there. They were perplexed, confused. They didn't know what to make of it. And suddenly, two men appeared in dazzling clothes. And we know in the Bible that whenever people appear in dazzling array, that they are, in fact, angels of God. And they stood there and they said to the women, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. The women now are no longer in that liminal space. They have moved out to the other side, past the last week of his life, past the crucifixion, past the death, and to the resurrection. But it's a great question. Why do you look for the living among the dead? We should sometimes ask ourselves that same question. We frequently, I think, in our lives, we tend to seek the living among the dead. Sometimes we cling to former visions of ourselves in our times and maybe people who are long gone and we go back in our memories and polish remember those times and we get stuck in that time and in that liminal space. Sometimes we do this by virtue of the fact that we refuse to allow a loved one to mature, to change, to evolve. And we get stuck looking for the living among the dead. Or in our liminal grief, we may stay with what is safe, but is long gone, all the while polishing that memory and unable to leave the dead behind. These two angels remind each of us that where the Holy One, Jesus Christ, dwells, that new life will burst forth and that we don't have to look for the living among the dead any longer. With the women at the tomb, we have moved from darkness to light. We have moved from being bound to being released. And we have moved this morning from death to life. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I invite you to stand as you're able and let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. At this, the heavenly choirs of angels rejoice. The earth exalts, and Mother Church is glad. Therefore, I ask you, who praise the loving kindness of Almighty God, to join in prayer for all of God's people, and for all people everywhere according to their needs, that all may know the benefits of the Paschal victory of Christ. We pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful God, we give you thanks for those who have come through the waters of rebirth into the promised land of your eternal kingdom. Guide all your baptized people who struggle to know and to do your will in the kingdoms of this world, that by their lives they may show forth the new life in Christ to all nations. Lord, in your mercy, for presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Bishop John Howard, our priest Brent Owens, and Elise G, and for all holy people of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those in positions of public trust, especially our President Joe, our Governor Ron, and our Mayor Lenny, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for those who struggle for peace and justice in the world. Guide their efforts that they may act with prudence and vision to plant the signs of your dominion in the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks that Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Salome found healing in the encounter with the risen Christ. Give wholeness and peace to all those in need. Michael, Carrie, Elizabeth, Megan, Sky, Kathleen, Missy, Peter, Brandon, Julie, Irwin, Courtney, Rodman, Allison, Polly, Lawrence, Jennifer, Anne, Brian, Lisa, Nancy, Ted, Randall, Ingo, John, Glenn, Ruth, Constantine, Gail, Art, Patricia, E.G., Judy, Dorothy, Ellen, and Shirley, the unloved and the forgotten, the poor and the hungry, the dying and the bereaved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the abiding presence of your Son in word and sacrament. As we feast this Easter day on the true bread from heaven, set our minds on things above, that we may gain a new perspective on the things that are on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for those who have gone before us in the faith, who now rest from their labors, awaiting the resurrection to eternal life. May we, like them, remain faithful to the end and share in the fruits of the victory of Christ the Paschal Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war, more peace, for wisdom, discernment, 
and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all of your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that we, who have been raised with him, may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, I have a few announcements for us in our common life together. Um, to begin with, um, after two long years of not having the chalice available to us, we now have the chalice. And so um, I'm going to give you a quick refresher on the chalice just because it's been so long and we're a bit rusty. Um, so to begin with, everyone who would like to receive the communion is welcome to come forward and um, simply come up and you'll receive the bread. And when the chalice comes by, you can either dip it into the wine, that's called intinction, or you can take a hold lightly of the cup and guide it to your lips to take a sip of it. And I, I request that because especially for ladies who wear large hats, it can be a little difficult to see where the cup is headed. <laughs> so we don't want to have any spills today. Uh, and we also want to be very inclusive of everyone, and so I invite you that even if you choose not to receive communion, come up anyways and cross your arms like so, and I'll offer a blessing instead. We also have gluten-free wafers available. All you need to do is just say so. Um, you may have noticed in the back parking lot here, the sequential coffee trailer. We have locally roasted, and I, in my opinion, the best coffee right here on our premises, and you can go out and they'll fix you anything that you want um, uh, after this service is over. Um, we have an Easter egg hunt that immediately follows this service. All the kids of all ages are welcome to participate. Um, and I'll give you a clue also for uh, the kids in the congregation. The flower box right over here, the front one on this side, there's chocolate in there. Just say it if you were interested. We have some very, very good news for you as well about some of the really cool ministries that the people of Good Shepherd are doing. Good Shepherd partnered with White Harvest Farms, which grows organic fruits and vegetables for the Clara White Mission to support the poor and the homeless in this town. We have partnered with White Harvest Farm to plant a blueberry patch with 240 blueberry bushes. I've learned in this process that blueberry bushes will live 40 to 50 years. So 40 to 50 years from now, the blueberry bushes that are part of the Good Shepherd Blueberry Patch will be providing for the people of Jacksonville even then. And you might ask, well, how big of a patch is that, 240 bushes? It's about the area of where our pews are. We've been out there for two Saturdays in a row with about 50 folks total to prepare the ground, and it's all ready. All the details are in your bulletin. On April 30th, we will plant those bushes, and it'll be followed by a joyous picnic. So please join us. 
I have some other really good news for you as part of our um, mission and outreach to the world at large. You may recall that back in September, we announced that the, the, um, the vestry, the governing board of the church, announced that we would donate 10% of our income September through December to uh, extinguish bad medical debt in Florida. So between what we have um, uh, saved as a result of that 10% commitment and um, a foundation that gave us some money and individuals that also contributed, we, on Friday, I sent a check to RIP Medical Debt for $22,035 to extinguish bad medical debt. And that money is to pay down and extinguish debt in Florida, and it will buy on the market for such things about 1.1, I'm sorry, 1.9 to 2.2 million dollars of bad medical debt. And that buy order has gone in and should be accomplished in the next week or two. Depending on the market and where the values are, it'll be about that much. So that is phenomenal. We will send a letter to each individual whose debt we bought, telling them that we bought the debt, it is extinguished, they owe nothing, and we will send a letter to the credit reporting agency so it goes off their credit report <coughs> forever. So, hallelujah. We also are partnering with um, Jasmine, which uh, is, of course, here in Riverside. They support LGBTQ um, youth and young adults, and their big fundraiser, Strides for Pride. The announcement is in your bulletin. Uh, last year, we had the largest team that gave the most money, and uh, we've partnered with three other Episcopal churches this year to even have a bigger team. And Elise has been um, helping us with that, and so uh, we hope that you'll join us on the 23rd for that 5K. Men's breakfast and Bible study, Wednesday, 7 a.m. We've had a dozen guys, and it turns out we have some really good cooks in our midst. So join us for a great breakfast, a short Bible study, in and out from 7 to 7.45. Last but not least, we want to give thanks for the many, many members of Good Shepherd and others who have given gifts for both our flowers and our fabulous music today, and also who have um, uh, adopted the boxes you see along the sides here and decorated them and helped to make all the Holy Week services so fabulous. So thank you all. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Bless those who will receive it and those who have given it. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and water, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. 
He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. invite the congregation as you come forward for communion to take a flower and to um, place it into the cross in the center and we will see what a beautiful thing it emerges by the end of the service.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.